Hey everyone, it's VM Campos. I went to the comic shop recently and let's see what I picked up. So starting off, I've got Rogue One, a Star Wars story number five from Marvel Comics. This is from Hauser, Lyso, and Rosenberg. Covers by Noto. So, oops, they covered his name down here. Uh, so this is the movie adaptation of that amazing movie. Very, very enjoyable movie. And what's cool about this book is that it shows you stuff that doesn't happen in the movie. So extra stuff. Next is Star Wars Cassian and K2SO. A side story to a side story, you might say. This is number one. It's from Marvel Comics by Syerzynski, Blanco, and Maiolo. Cool cover. Um, not sure who did it. I haven't read the book yet. I like the action of the cover, the X-Wings, and the Rebel logo back there. So this is an origin story of these two great characters. Harley Quinn, number 25, extra size anniversary issue from DC Comics. Can you believe it's been 25 whole years of Harley Quinn? So she's been through many incarnations throughout the years, and this is the Connor Palmiotti age. Dinny still works with her. We've got Hardin Blevins, Bone and Sinclair. This is the regular cover one. Uh, there was also the Cho cover, but I prefer I prefer the Connor and Sinclair art more. Uh, pretty violent cover, actually. But um, it's her anniversary party. It's Surprise Surprise, part one. Then I've got uh, Deathstroke Defiance, number 21. Uh, Dark Titan storyline, I guess. I'm not reading this book at all. I don't know any of these characters, really. But it stood out for me for the cover swipe. This is the classic Justice League cover swipe, which was then swiped by, I guess, Justice League Europe, Justice League International, whatever. So I just wanted to add it to my collection because it was a kind of a familiar cool cover swipe. First issue of a bold new era. I like their costumes and the characters look interesting. Uh, and all creative team, Priest, Nevis, Paz, and Cox. I mostly read Marvel books nowadays, so here is Doctor Strange number 23. This is one of the ones I read on the regular basis. I was there from the beginning of the current Doctor Strange storyline, and I was sad to see Aaron and Bachalo leaving the comic at issue 20. Bachalo was still doing the covers for 21 and 22, and now the team has gone over completely to Hopeless and Henriken. Different style, it's more realistic than the Bachalo era, but uh, I like it. And this is tying into the uh, Secret Empire storyline, which I'm not a fan of. But uh, I'm reading Doctor Strange, and I'll stick with it. Another one that I've stuck with for a while is The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Here is number 22. A uh, new storyline starting here. Enter the Savage Land. I love this book. It's so much fun. We've got North Henderson and Renzi doing a great job on this really fun, out-of-the-ordinary character. Instead of the grim grittiness of the other stories that are going on, it's kind of cool to see something else of just fun and adventure. Really like that cover. It's different style than Henderson's usual style. Uh, looks like um, painted and such. Too bad this big old barcode here and this logo here mar it because this would be a great poster to put on the wall. I needed to catch up, so I'm actually, I've also picked up 23. So this is the continuation. Love this cover. It's so realistic. And a really fun young love and Doombots in the Savage Land with Squirrel Girl kicking Doombot butt. Uh, looking at it kind of closer, it looks like it's Prismacolor pencils. I don't really see that medium used. Uh, not on this series or on many comics nowadays just because it's so much effort to do it. Amazing Spider-Man 30. And 31, I also uh, was a little behind, so I picked both of these up, continuing the uh, Secret Empire, which again, I'm not a fan of. 
but Spider-Man is my favorite comic character of all time, uh, and these Ross covers are just tremendous. Although I don't like that spider car, I think that's really lame. Uh, uh, the new Hydra Doc, uh, Dr. Octopus is really cool. And then look at that, just like powerful cover. This is like, it doesn't need any embellishment, it doesn't need any spider cars and all of that. It's just Spider-Man, look at him, just battling. And just amazing realism. Alex Ross, again, is just tremendous. All good things must come to an end, and here is Spider-Man 2099, number 25, the last issue of the series. I was reading Spider-Man 2099 in the 90s when he debuted. Hadn't read him in a while, but when he had his own series again, volume 2 a few years ago, I picked it up. I really liked it. These Francesco Mattina covers are just tremendous. Uh, again, they, they give Ross a run for his money. And uh, this is the end of the line for this series. I don't want to spoil everything. You should really read it. But here we have two Spider-Mans 2099s and Tempest. So um, this is by David Slinney and Rosenberg. Really cool that they've been on the, on the complete run from the beginning. They, they did every single issue. This is actually more like issue 32 or so, because there were about 12 issues, I think, or so. Nine or ten issues of volume 2, Spider-Man 2099, until Secret Wars, when it rebooted back to number 1. So this, um, with legacy numbering, this is obviously higher. Keeping it in the Spider family, I've got Spider-Gwen. Here's another one that I was reading from the beginning. And I'll pull out my hipster card saying I was reading Edge of Spider-Verse number 2 before you, and I've got her first appearance. This is volume 2 of her series, number 22, and she had, I think, 7 issues on the first series, or 6 issues. So this is more like issue 28 or so. Uh, Latour, Rodriguez, and Renzi, great team on this as well. Uh, we're still waiting for the appearance of Gwenum. She's coming. She's been hinted at. And uh, we've seen uh, Wolverine from Earth-65 and Kitty Pride, So, cool storyline there. So, back in the day, in the early 90s, when Image started, I uh, read an issue or two of Savage Dragon, but never really kept up. I've started again recently with about 221, and this is 225. Can you believe it? 225 issues and a 25th anniversary of Savage Dragon. This is the regular cover, and uh, it's basically, yeah, it's 100 pages. Super spectacular, 100 pages. With a super spectacular 9.99 cost. Unlike that one Spider-Man book that was also that price, but not so many, con not so many pages. Anyway, this, so this is Eric Larson's brainchild for 25 years, actually a character that he's had since he was a kid. This is the 100 pages. This is part three of the universe-shattering events that have been culminating in the last three issues. Uh, and there's a long mythology for this character, of course. Uh, you need to look back into it, but basically the original Savage Dragon isn't the main dragon anymore. Malcolm is the main character, a lot of stuff happening, different dimensions, a lot of stuff going on. And a uh, little bit of controversy in that the book is getting uh, uh, like sexier, dirtier, more grown up. There's more and more nudity in the book. As a matter of fact, I got the alternate cover, the triple X rated cover. Uh, it's not safe for work at all. So if you're interested in me opening that, skip to the end or else. You're going to be shocked at the nudity. That's later. Another shocking book, I Hate Fairyland, from Scotty Young. Image Comics is number 14. This is the regular cover. Fluff this maze. This is the G-rated cover, I Hate Fairyland. If you're not reading this book, it's super funny, it's super weird and violent, really well drawn. I also got the adult version of it. I will show that to you at the end of the video. So we're living in interesting political times. That's a nice way to say it. The real way to say it is fuck Trump. But anyway, it's all about the comics in this video. So this is Cal Exit. Uh, this one stood out for me, of course, as a liberal fantasy. But nope, we're going to stay. We're going to fight. 
Anyway, so here's from Black Mask, Calyx hit number one by Pizzolo, Nahuelpan, Boss, and Campbell. Basically, what if California broke away from the United States under the Trump regime? So we'll see where this series goes. Haven't read it yet, but picked it up. I guess it appealed to my values, and uh, can't wait to check it out. This was on the shelf, and it really stood out to me because of the name Brendan Small. And this is, of course, his Galacticon Magnum Opus, which started off as a, uh, you know, a musical project. And here it is now as a comic book. I don't know anything about it. I never heard the, the music, but I know who Brendan Small is. And so I liked the cover and I picked it up. This is from Albatross, number one. Brendan Small, Eric Powell, name that uh, is big in the comics at the moment. Steve Mannion, Marissa Louise, and Warren Montgomery. And then we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number 69. So anyway, this, uh, this is another classic uh, creator-owned comic that's been around a long time. They bounced around in a bunch of publishers. They, of course, were at Mirage. Uh, then we've got them at IDW. They were at Archie Comics, too. And I haven't uh, kept up with Turtles in a long time. I don't know what's going on with them at all. Although a few issues ago, there was the death of a turtle. I don't know how that turned out. But I just kind of wanted to pick this up. You know, nostalgia and all of that. Uh, creative team Eastman, Waltz, Santo Luco, and Pattison. So I think I remember this little gecko guy from back in my day. Or it might be a new character. I don't know who that character is. There's the Ninja Turtles. Oh no, what's all of these guys getting captured or something? And uh, yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from IDW. And the truth is out there, The X-Files Origins, number one, Dog Days of Summer, from Hauser, Smith, and Fenolio. A very young Fox Mulder, young Dana Scully. Uh, I really liked the cover. It's uh, my sort of aesthetic, cartoony, fun and cute. Uh, and what's cool is that it's a double cover. So if you want the Mulder cover or the Scully cover, there you go. Both of these, I love these covers, this art. I don't know anything about the book, just wanted to pick it up. Uh, again, nostalgia and all of that, but X-Files is one of my favorite TV shows of all time and couldn't pass it up. So there you go, these are the books I picked up this week. See anything you like? Do you have any recommendations? What about your own comic haul? Leave a comment, don't forget to thumbs up, and if you like videos about comics, Comic-Con, cosplay, technology, all that fun stuff, don't forget to subscribe. This has been VM Campos. Thanks for watching.